Well, hello and welcome to my studio. My name is Jane and I run Snapdragon Life. And I thought that today what I'll do is to show you some of the things that I am working on, which are to do with the Studio Club. Now, the Studio Club is my online community and each month we do a creative project. It tends to either be about mindful sewing or about responding to the nature that's around you and creating something. And at the moment, in April, what we've been doing is making these kind of travel sewing kits. Then next month, we are going to be dyeing wool with plants that you can forage or grow. And then in June, we're going to be doing cyanotypes, which is sun photography. So at the moment, I am finishing up the sewing kits. I'm prepping for the um, botanical dyeing, and then I'm kind of got one eye on the future, creating samples for the cyanotypes. So I'm going to show you all three of these. So first of all, the sewing kits. These are a kind of sewing kit which is called a housewife or a huswif. And it's a travel kit which is very light, very practical, and which was originally made for people who were going to be on the road, largely men. Um, something that a soldier would have in his kit bag, or if you're going to sea, or if you're travelling salesman. Um, something from a time when clothes were really expensive, when they were treasured, and when people would be expecting to do their own mending kind of on the hoof. The a stitch in time saves nine. Now, we tend not to have that kind of thing now and what we've been doing in the studio club is making some travel kits that are a little bit more updated they're either things that could have in our mending bag or maybe for doing embroidery something that's transportable that kind of um project on the move kind of thing or there are a lot of people who are making them as gifts for people going off to university or for a new job moving out, or maybe for um, gap years traveling abroad, that kind of thing. So that it's, it's a lovely gift to give somebody because it's practical, but you've also thought a lot about it. So I'm going to show you the three that I made or am making as samples. So this one was the first one, and this is um, the outer cover was made with a vintage patchwork that I did, or a patchwork of vintage fabrics. And this was March's project in the Studio Club. So you can see it's a diamond pattern and it's English pieced patchwork. It gives it, because I used all old fabrics, it's given it a really sort of oldie worldy, antique kind of feel. And then I have lined it inside with a piece of Liberty's fabric, which I um, aged slightly by putting it in tea. And then it has a pocket here, which is of some flannel that I cut off the inside of a quilt that was damaged beyond repair. You can see it's just very, very simple, one pocket. And then because it's quilted onto a piece of blanket, um, this middle bit is actually uh, sturdy enough to act as the pin cushion and then the pocket is is sort of like you can put scissors and i have little pin cushion that i made from the extra um diamond here and that is made exactly the same way as i showed two videos ago out of the the wee thing so that goes in there and there are some snips these snips are really useful because if anybody is traveling on hand luggage only, you can get them through the airport scanners. And then I have some embroidery thread and the rest of my patchwork 
it. And I will probably put that um, just into my sewing basket and I'll be able to grab it if I'm ever wanting to do some sewing on the go. So that's that one. And this is the one that I made before the class started so that I could take some photos. And then this one is made all from um, either quilting cottons or tarna lawn. So it's all modern fabrics in this lovely range of blues. You can see this is exactly the same, but quite a different feel from this one. And this is the one that I have been making as we go along in the April course. And so it's got the, the patchwork very simply bound around it. And then inside it has two pockets. This one here, which is made from a bit of um, binding from an old blanket. And then this one down here, it has a little kind of needle book because this one's much thinner. The wadding inside it is just a bit of old t-shirt. And then here I have just a little tab sewn onto the side with a um, one of those bits you get on key rings, split rings, that's what they're called. And that holds the embroidery threads. Again, a pocket for putting in some threads and so on. And then these just fold up, thunk, thunk, and then a ribbon tie right round them. And that can just fit into a suitcase or a sewing bag or it's decorative enough just to have around the house for when you need to mend something. And then the third one that I'm making, I am just making, I didn't, not going to do the patchwork this time. I'm just using a beautiful piece of Sanderson linen as the outside, it's a scrap that I had. And then I'm going to quilt it all like this. Inside a piece of linen that I dyed with birch twigs last year and the interlining again is an old piece of blanket so this will be quite sturdy and squashy and I'm going to make this as the kind of mending kit to put into the caravan that we are going to be renting out because I, the Sanderson fabric is left over from some cushions that I made for that. So that is what I've been doing for April. From May we're moving on to botanical dyeing. Now with botanical dyeing, particularly botanical dyeing with local plants, um, I often hear from people that they don't get nice clear colours, that they get something that's a little bit sad beige, I think would be call called. So I decided that for this May, when all of the kind of the leaves and uh, the UK are really uh, springing up and anywhere in the Northern Hemisphere is going to be nice fresh kinds of leaves um, that I would do a very simple straightforward back to basics kind of botanical dyeing codes that can easily be done in a kitchen um, and show the amazing colours that you can get from these leaves if you know how to do it and if you follow very simple steps. I think that with botanical dyeing there has been a sort of problem that you've either got things like very short TikToks um, or reels which leave out some of the steps and yes it's very easy to end up with washed out colours or beigey kind of colours or things that don't sing. Or you have courses that make things really, really complicated and bamboozle you with information. So I wanted to come somewhere in the middle of that to explain what happens with the botanical dyes and how each kind of plant to get the best out of it, you treat it in a slightly different way. So this week I have been um, dyeing some samples so that I can take photos at the, for the beginning of the course. The course in the studio club is going to be 
May's course. So it's going to start, I think, about the 8th of May. First week is always kind of about getting your stuff together. And then there are um, videos. We might do a Zoom live for this one. Um, kind of tutorials and so on. But I thought I would show you the colors that I've got from my samples. So this is what I start off with. This is just like plain undyed cream wool. And then the ones that I have used. So this one is nettle, um, which is a kind of a gray pistachio greeny color. And then, have I actually got some things still on them? This one is cow parsley, which is a nice mid green. Because what I'm wanting to do is to show that you can actually get different colors from all of these things. This one, which is my favorite, I mean, look at the vibrancy of that color. That is from Sweet Sicily. This is Sweet Sicily here, which is a plant that is certainly um, quite invasive in my garden. It grows nicely under hedges, but um, also likes all of my borders. Um, and the leaves smell of aniseed when they are crushed. So if you're going to use Sweet Sicily, which I really suggest if you're interested in natural dyeing, Sweet Sicily is top plant. Um, it means that wherever you're dyeing, that's kitchen or a dye space or whatever, smells just amazing. This one here, if we're talking about invasive plants, this was dyed with ground elder. Now, um, there are lots of people who have a great problem with ground elder in their gardens, and I'm probably one of them. Um, but if you can recast it as being a really nice plant for giving you a good yellowish green, then maybe you won't um, be troubled with it quite so much. Um, all of these, I have found them to be moderately light fast. And by that, I mean that there has been very little fading in maybe four years of dyeing things with them. Um, there aren't color fast, color fast. They're not weld or madder or indigo, but for anything that I am needing them for, which tends to be knitted items which are not left out in the sun, they are absolutely brilliant. And then this orange is from hawthorn leaves. And again, I was cutting some bits off a hawthorn hedge so that I could get through my garden and then they've made this beautiful yellow. But if you see all of these together, you can see that they are all such wonderful colors and they are also really different from each other. So I'm going to be designing um, something knitted, likely a cushion. It might be a hot water bottle to cover, but to use these in stripes um, or blocks, something to, to really show off the colors of the landscape around us. So I'm taking some photos of this. I'm going to be knitting them up so that I can work on the knitting pattern. And then from the 8th of May, I'm going to be in the studio club um, showing the step by step from getting these colors. If you want to know more details about the studio club, it's the link is in the description underneath this. And then while I'm actively working on this, my head is kind of going towards what we're going to be doing in June and what is it that I'm going to need to do in April so that I can um, teach that effectively in June. And the answer is I need, because we're going to be doing cyanotypes and cyanotyping is, is much easier if you have flat um, flowers to be doing it with. I needed to start um, pressing some flowers. And if you watch the um, tour of my studio, which is, I'll, I'll link it here. Um, you remember that I had got a piece of furniture, which I said I was going to adapt to put all of my pressed flowers in it. Well, I shall show you how that turned out. You might remember that I got this amazing cabinet 
from my mum because she had it in her storeroom and she was using it to keep all of her jewellery mending supplies. She no longer does that, she no longer needed this, so I got it. And it is just brilliant because it has these drawers, very sh nice shallow drawers, and originally they all had these plastic inners, which I did not want. But I found that they were very, very easy to take out. Look, there we go. And then you end up with a much nicer shallow drawer. So, pop that back in. What I have done is line these, you can see them, line them with just uh, plain paper and then I can put all of my pressed flowers in it. This is a Coreopsis and these are indigo flowers which print a beautiful blue-green. Now, my aim is to go through the season and to fill up all of these drawers with things. So here are some Achillea leaves. And what else have I got in here? Here are some Tagetes from last year and some Tagetes leaves. Um, some of these things will be for eco printing, but some of them will be for making cyanotypes. So at the moment, what I'm looking at is, can I print, uh, can I press some Narcissi? Because I think with cyanotype, that will give a really nice effect. And, um, just kind of like build up enough stock so that I can make some samples. As soon as we get into May, I'll be beginning to make some samples for June's classes so I can get some photography done. People have an idea of what we're going to be doing. So that is what I'm doing day to day at the moment. I'm finishing up April the sewing kits. I am actively working on samples to help people get the really the best best colours um, from leaves in the garden or foraged and I've got one eye on June and what I need to be prepping so that I can be ready to teach a cyanotype class then. I hope you've enjoyed that peek around and I will see you next week. All details of the Studio Club are underneath this. And it tends to be that alongside the club, I'll do a kind of a bonus thing, which I share for free on YouTube. Um, so I hope to see you next week. Bye bye.